I am liking our transfer business so far. Liking that we're using the free agent market early rather than leaving it late as we usually do. Doing it on the sly with no real rumours and bringing in some corkers like this one. I'm the type of player that likes to, to get stuck in, give 100% every week and um, hopefully impact the team in a positive way. During my time here, what I'm trying to achieve is I want to play as many games as I can. I want to help the team as much as possible and hopefully that means winning games. The reason I joined Charlton is because it's a massive club, it's, it's got a huge potential and the style of play I think will suit me down to the ground. Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Addicts Editions, my transfer series where we go over everything about Charlton's signings over the course of the summer and winter transfer windows. We are knuckling down now, we are getting deals done, three done last week and we have kicked off our transfer business this week with probably the best signing so far. It's come completely out of nowhere and I like this one a lot, I have to say. Charlton Athletic have completed the permanent signing of Lincoln City midfielder Connor McGrandles. The 26-year-old Scottish midfielder joins the Addicts on a three-year contract following the expiration of his contract at the Imps. Yeah, I like this one a lot. I like this one a lot. This is, in my opinion, our best signing so far. Very, very talented and creative midfielder. Very, very exciting one as well. We have a lot of options in midfield now. The midfield is absolutely stacked, which is, of course, what we want. And yeah, McGrandles is just going to add that much competitiveness to this side because, my God, what a player he is at this level. And this is a seriously seriously good signing so as ever with these videos guys you know the drill we will read through the club's statement see what Conor McGrandles has to say about joining Charlton we'll see what Ben Garner has to say and we'll see what Thomas Soundgard has to say and then we will give my thoughts about the signing and we'll go a bit deeper into his statistics Charlton Athletic are delighted to confirm the signing of talented midfielder Conor McGrandles the 26 year old has signed a three-year deal with the club following the expiry of his contract at Lincoln City he played a vital role in the Lincoln side that reached the League One playoff final in 2020 and has played in 79 league games for the Imps over the last two seasons, regularly winning the captain's armband in the club's 2021-22 campaign. McGrandles becomes the Addicts' fourth signing of a busy transfer window following the arrivals of Owen O'Connell, Mandela Egbo and Joe Walcott. The midfielder, who has been attracting interest from Championship and League One clubs, explained he was delighted to join the Addicts. He said, The manager has told me about his style of play, the way he wants to go about things, and it suits me down to the ground. I want to be in a team that moves the ball and attacks and ultimately enjoys playing football. I have personally had a few good seasons. I think this is the right club for me to kick on and push myself to the next level. Hopefully, I can bring a bit of leadership and quality, which will be good for everyone. Ben Garner was pleased to add to his midfield. He said, Connor is a really talented player who has proven himself to be one of the best midfield players in League One in recent seasons. He is a very consistent performer with great intelligence and adds even more quality and versatility to our midfield options. Connor also has the potential to get even better and we welcome him to Charlton Athletic. But and CEO Thomas Sangod said, I'm really pleased we've been able to sign Connor. He was highly sought after as he is an excellent midfielder at this level and will continue to grow during his time with us. We want to control the midfield next season and adding Connor to the players we already have gives us a great opportunity to do that. Born in Falkirk, McGrandles began his career with his hometown club before joining Norwich City in 2014 after impressing in Scotland. He joined MK Dons in 2017, playing 91 games for the Dons before signing for Lincoln City at the start of the 2020-21 season. McGrandles enjoyed two seasons in Lincolnshire before making the switch to the Valley. McGrandles will meet his new teammates when they return to the UK following this week's pre-season training camp in Spain. So there is the club statement about the signing of Conor McGrandles. Now it is time to get into my my thoughts about the signing and as I said in the introduction this is our best signing so far he's been such an influence in League One over the past few years not to mention the last two with Lincoln in the past few years obviously XMK Dons as well and obviously Lincoln's captain and I would like to think that this is a real statement signing 26 years old obviously still does his age on his side still relatively young and yeah, he has a lot of League One experience. So as the article did say, he did begin his career up in Scotland with Falkirk, where he was born. He then made the move 
to Norwich City where he didn't get an awful lot of games with the Canaries. He only played one game in the Championship in 2014-15. He was mainly part of their uh, under-23 side. Then he made to move to MK Dons in 2017-18. Then, of course, he made his way to Lincoln in the 2020-21 season. He played 42 games for Lincoln that year, scoring four goals and getting two assists. And of course, Lincoln did make the playoff final that year, but missed out on promotion to Blackpool. And then last season, he played 39 games, scoring two and getting one assist. And his disciplinary record over the last two seasons with Lincoln is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, in the uh, promotion, uh, in the playoff final season, he got himself 10 yellow cards. Last season, he got 12. So he certainly got a temper on him and he does love a yellow card, which I think many people will, uh, will quite like that. You know, he likes to get stuck in with the challenges and likes to be dirty in the middle of the park. Averaging 0.7 key passes per 90, he was fouled 1.4 times per 90, according to his statistics. In terms of his passing, he averaged 47.4 passes per 90 and an 82.6% pass completion rate. So very, very good uh, in terms of his passing range and his ability. And his defensive statistics were actually really good as well, averaging 2.8 tackles per 90, 1.1 interceptions, 1.1 fouls and two clearances per 90. So he seems judging by last season, a really good all-rounded player. You know, he's good creatively and he's also good defensively. You know, he likes to get into the box and make tackles and good clearances. I, I was looking at some heat maps on Twitter yesterday. Somebody shared them, a Bristol City fan, because Bristol City were actually linked to him at Grendel. So that tells me even more that it is a statement signing because he was getting interest from championship clubs and we've beaten the likes of Bristol City to McGrandall's signature. I was looking at some heat maps that uh, they shared on um, on Twitter about his season and I, I, I had a look at the statistics. His passing range last season was excellent. It was absolutely fantastic and his heat map showed that he liked to be more in the defensive side of the play. He liked to, you know, play from deep, you know, get the ball um in the more defensive areas, in the more deeper areas of the pitch and move up from there. And like I said, his passing range is absolutely fantastic based off last season. So I think he could potentially offer a bit more uh, competition for George Dobson's position, but he could also play more in the central um, area as well. So he's very versatile. And like I said, he's very, very all-rounded, you know, very good defensively based off last season and also very good creatively. Obviously, it was a pretty disastrous season for Lincoln last year, finishing 17th. So you could probably say McGrandles was one of their better players last season and probably one of their better players in their whole squad over the last few years. I've been a big admirer of McGrandles. We've spoken about him a couple of times in the League One transfer room a roundup. Obviously, it was rumoured that McGrandles was going to leave Lincoln uh, in the summer and amid interest from... Um, Clubs in his home nation, I think Hibernian and Aberdeen uh, were linked with him, but they kind of went quiet. And this one, I must say, was completely out of nowhere. I had no idea that Bristol City were even linked with him, let alone us. But I do like the fact that, you know, we're going about our business really quietly. You know, we're not really giving anything away and we're just getting about our business quickly. And I really, really like that. And I think our four signings so far, they are very exciting. They are very, very exciting. And I can understand fully why Ghana has signed them, you know, because they fit the system, you know, they fit the build, they fit what he wants to play, they fit the philosophy. And I think this one, especially this McGrendel signing, is very, very exciting because on paper, he's one of the best midfielders in this league. I, I, it may be controversial saying that. I think he's going to add a lot to this midfield, whether that be in the creative side, in the attacking third, pushing forward and spraying the ball left, right and centre, or helping out in the defensive line as well and offering some competition Ooh. for Jules Dobson's position. Now, like I said in the beginning of the video, our midfield is absolutely stacked now. We have so many options in the centre of the park. And I'll read them out to you now. So we've got McGrandles, and then we've obviously got Dobson. We've got Fraser, Forster Kasky, Gilby, Morgan, Clare, if you count him as a central midfielder because he played most of his football last season in the back three. And also Aaron Henry, who, of course, is out in Spain right now. As Richard Cawley said uh, earlier this morning, actually, he said that with McGrandles coming in, it would make sense for Ghana to move on maybe one or two of the midfield options because while it is obviously great to have competition, we can't have you know that many central players. I mean, Jules Dobson is technically the only natural defensive midfielder. The rest of them are all central midfielders. Obviously, the situation with Claire, we've said it so many times in previous videos, we don't know where he's going to play. Is he going to play centre-back? Is he going to play right-back? I have no idea. Or are we going to play him in his natural position? Now, in terms of players that we could potentially move on, I think the most likely candidates and I think the most obvious players to let go is Alex Gilby and Albie Morgan. I think they're probably the two that I would stick as top of that list and maybe Aaron Henry as well. Gilby, personally, I'd let go permanently. I think the move hasn't worked out for him. Obviously, he's shown 
glimpses of his quality, but I think overall the move just hasn't worked out for him. And ultimately, we haven't seen the same player that MK Don saw. He was obviously two-time player of the year in consecutive years. As for Alvin Morgan, obviously a lot of people do like him. Don't get me wrong, I do like Morgan. I am a fan of him. And I think he did end last season really well. But we do have to say that over the course of the season overall... Morgan had a very underwhelming season and I think he looked absolutely shot of confidence and at times was one of our worst players on the pitch. So I really do think a loan to League 2 will be good for him and I think he needs to make that league his own. As for Aaron Henry, obviously it would be really nice to see him get some minutes here and there this season. But again, I don't think he's quite ready. That's not to say that I don't like the guy. Obviously, I think he's very, very up and coming. I think he's, he's only 18, so he's still very, very young. Or he might be 19, I'm not sure. But uh, it, bottom line is he's very, very young and he was playing... Uh, National League football last year with Wildstone, I want to say. Was he with Wildstone? I think he was with Wildstone. Anyway, I think that he needs to go out on loan again, maybe to the National League again. I would like to see him play League 2 football, but maybe that's a bit of a step too far. I'm getting excited for this season, man. I really, really am. And this signing is definitely, in my opinion anyway, a real statement. Like I said, our midfield is absolutely stacked. And I think McGrandall's is certainly going to offer a lot in the middle of the park. You know, very good defensively. Passing ability is excellent. He likes to get forward, likes to create. He's got a bit of a temper on him, which I think a lot of people will like. Offers a lot of League One experience. He's been at League One level for a number of years now. Lincoln's captain last year, so leadership on the pitch. And on a free transfer. Obviously, I would like us to spend money in the transfer window. I would like us to show a bit of ambition and just get stuck in and get some big names into the team. That's not to say, obviously, the free agents aren't big names. But there's nothing wrong with signing a free agent. We don't have to spend a fee to bring in players. You know, we can see that it worked in 2018-19 when we got promoted. We signed 10 players that season, didn't spend a penny. So it can work. And all of these players we've brought in, O'Connell, Egbo, Wallacott and McGrandles, they've all been on a free transfer. And there's a lot to like with all of them. O'Connell, ball playing centre-back, makes a lot of sense. Obviously had a good season individually with Rochdale and was their captain. Mandela Egbo, really impressed at Swindon. But obviously been around the block in Germany and the United States. And seems like a fullback that can cross the ball in the box, which is exactly what we need. And he's only 24, so he's got age on his side. Wallacott... That's the only like hmm, one so far, but I trust Garner's judgment. He's obviously had a great season individually with Swindon as well, League Two Player of the Year, and again has a lot to give. 25 years of age, very young for a goalkeeper. And then this one, McGrandall's 26, Lincoln's captain, obviously very good uh, at League One level. He's played a lot of games uh, at League One level, 79 games at League One level in the past two seasons with a playoff final in there as well. So that I think is exactly what we need. Our main priority at the club right now has to be left back. We haven't got any at the club right now at the moment it looks like Jake Forstakowski could be playing left back remember him playing there uh, in our championship season and doing a pretty good job from what I remember but yeah it looks like he's going to be playing there for the time being or maybe one of our youngsters Lucas Ness or Sam Uganteo but yeah we need to sign a couple more players especially in that department obviously we're still a little bit more to go we need more bodies in through the door but this is certainly a good start and like I said McGrandall's is in my opinion by far the best one so far and I'm really looking forward to seeing what he can do in a Charlton shirt. So that is it for this episode of Addicts Editions. I hope you guys did enjoy it. If you did, can you possibly leave a like, subscribe if you are new to the channel and turn on those post notifications so you are notified of every time I upload a new video. Welcome to Charlton Athletic, Conor McGrandles. I hope you like it here, mate. I hope you can settle in. It is a shame that he's not out there in Spain with the rest of the lads, but when they do return, I'm sure that the rest of the team will make him feel welcome and he will settle in well here down in London. And hopefully he can be the player that Lincoln City saw and he can offer a lot to the midfield park. What do you guys think about the signing of McGrandles? Let me know in the comments below. This has been Tyler Ronson. Have a nice day, and I'll see you all in the next video. Take it easy, stay safe, and I'll see you all then.